Okay, I heard that you are taking Cal2, therefore I have this right here for you. Let's take a look at how we can integrate the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. You know, usually when you have a quadratic inside of a square root, we just want to have two terms, so you can do tricks up. But here we have three terms. It's not that bad at all because we can complete the square. Let me show you how to do that. So let me just put that right here. By completing the square, CTS. Okay, not the car, but you know, completing the square. Let's focus on the inside, which is x squared plus 4x, but I'm going to leave a gap for the magic number I will show you. And then I will just put on the plus 5 here. And now you might be wondering, what's the magic number and how can we find it? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that we have a 1 in front of the x squared, which we do. That's good. Then you are going to look at this number here, the coefficient of x, which is 4 here, and you are going to add uh, the little formula is just 1 half times 4 and then you square that so you just need to work this out and that's the magic number this number is going to be so magical because it's going to make this right here a perfect square so this is always going to work i know some of you guys can just tell me the answer is 4 but you know this is the way you approach it anyway figure this out you get 1 half times 2 is uh, 1 half times 4 is 2 and you square that that's 4 so here you are going to add this magic number, but you also have to make sure you subtract the magic number here so that this is still the same as the original. And the beauty is that right here, the first three terms gives you a perfect square now. Factor this, you get x plus 2 times x plus 2, name the x plus 2 square, and then this and that, of course, 5 minus 4 is 1. Now, we'll just put this inside, and then we'll continue from there. Alright, so as we can see, this is going to be the integral of the square root, and then the inside is this, which is x plus 2 squared plus 1, and then we have that dx right here. That's nice. However, but remember, x plus 2 squared, hmm, you have two ways to do it. First, you can just do, you can just let this right here to be the what do we need? Yes, tangent. Tangent squared theta plus 1 will give you secant squared theta. That's exactly what we need. And let's just put that down right here. Let's just take the input here, which is x plus 2, to be our tangent theta. And some people may want you to write this as u and all that. You can do it, but I think this is pretty clear. Especially if you look at this right here and differentiate both sides, you get dx, right? Because the derivative of this is just dx. And you just differentiate this, you get secant squared theta, d theta right away, like this. We can get to the theta world right away. Now we see that this right here is just the integral, and then we have the square root. This right here, remember, is our tangent theta. So let's put that down, tangent theta. And of course, we have the blue portion, which is the square, and then the plus 1. And then the dx is this, so I also write down secant square theta d theta, like that. And now, what's this inside? Put this down in blue again. This right here, as I said earlier, this is just secant square theta in the square root of and of course, square square root in this situation, we just look at this as secant to the first power theta. And then of course, this times that, you end up with secant to the third power theta. So we get the integral of secant to the third power theta here, d theta. Wow, this is so crazy, isn't it? Hmm, how do you integrate this? Technically, you have to use integration by parts, and you have to do this, you know, maybe on the side. And if I have a video on this, be sure you guys go check that out. That video has over like 200,000 views, which is I'm um, really happy about. But I made that video so many years ago. So you guys can take a look of how I used to look at, how I used to look like. So, yeah. And leave a comment down below and let me know any, any thoughts of me now versus the me before. But I will just tell you guys what the answer is right here, okay? So I will show you. The answer to this right here is equal to 1 half secant theta times tangent theta plus 1 half natural log absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta like this. 
and we are not done yet because we have to go back to the x world. Well, how can we go back? Of course, we have to rely on this right here. So let's take a look. Let me put this down right here again. We know tangent theta equals x plus 2. And let's look at this as x plus 2 over 1. And then from here, we'll draw our usual right triangle. Triangle here. Tangent is the opposite. So here we have x plus 1. I mean x plus 2, sorry. Over the adjacent. So here is the 1. And now we have to figure out the hypotenuse, which is right here. And for this hypotenuse, it's going to be the square root of this square plus that square. So let me write down x plus 2 square plus 1 square. And doesn't this look familiar? Yes, it's this. And yes, it's that. So I will just write this down as the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5, like that. OK? And of course, everybody's in the square root. All right, now we'll just take this back to the x world. And as we can see, first we have 1 half. And then let's do the secant here first. Yeah, I want to just show you guys the equal sign. Eh? 1 half. OK, good. And then secant theta, by looking at this triangle, is the hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's just this. So I'll write down square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. And we also have to multiply by tangent theta. And tangent theta is x plus 2. right? So this part is just x plus 2. So we'll multiply by the x plus 2. All right, and that's pretty much the idea. You pretty much do the same for the rest. 1 half, natural log, absolute value. And you have the secant theta, which is this over that again. So I'll put this down in red again. And we have the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 5. And then you add the tangent theta, which is, again, x plus 2. That's all. Like this. And here's the little question for you guys. Do I need the absolute value? Hmm. Let's see. In order for me to see if this requires the absolute value or not, is I have to see if this is always bigger than this or not. In fact, you don't need absolute value. Why? Because this expression, right? This expression, especially the inside. If you take the square root, you pretty much take the square root of this. You take the square root of that. And you see you have x plus 2 squared and then plus 1. This expression is always bigger than the x plus 2. So it doesn't really matter what x is right here. This inside will always be positive. So in fact, you just need parentheses. So just like that. And perhaps I should have put this in the front because usually we like to write the square root in the back. But I think this is it. I'll just leave this to you guys. And I will box the answer for you guys. And for my... You know, count two students, leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. If you don't have any questions, just give me a like and just say hi and all that. Anyway, if you guys are new to my channel though, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.